Hey friends, it's Natalia. Welcome back to She Makes 31. In today's video, we are celebrating my five-year-old's birthday with a shark party theme. Join me for all things shark theme like food and desserts and party favors. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, my friends, so I do live in South Florida, so you know that it is hot this summer. I didn't want to do a regular cake because I know that it was just going to melt in the weather. So I decided to do a cookie cake. I will be linking the recipe that I found online in the description box so you can follow along. You're basically making a giant cookie. I use one of my large baking sheets. It's actually covers the whole top shelf or whatever, the size of the shelf of my oven. So um, it was very large. I ended up doubling the recipe. Actually, it's two and a half times the recipe amount is what I did. I think I would have tripled it um, because I still wanted to make it bigger but it was perfect actually now that i think back on it because if i would have made it any bigger i wouldn't have been able to fit it out in any of the cake boxes that they sell in store so here i am i am putting it on the cookie sheet with some parchment paper underneath and i use mini chocolate chips um you can use whatever you'd like but i like that it looks like it's more chocolatey this way um, i measured it out just to make sure that it was going to fit inside of my cake box I also wanted to make cupcakes because I do have a cupcake carrier that I was able to put inside one of our coolers and that kind of helped with uh, keeping the temperature right. I used a regular white box uh, cake mix and then I did some research on all the different frostings and how they hold up to the heat and my research concluded that Italian meringue buttercream frosting holds up the best to the hot weather. We did have this party at the beach, so this was a must for me. Um, I will say that the buttercream did hold up, although I did leave it out um, to get a little bit of sun, so that didn't help. Um, I should have kept it in the shade, but anyway, in order to make this frosting, which I will link the recipe down below for you, um, you do need a electric mixer, and not a hand mixer, but like a stand mixer. I borrowed my friend's Kitchen Aid mixer. I had never used one before, and now that I have, I want my own. <laughs> but uh, I'll have to save up for that. But um, basically, this uh, buttercream frosting, it is not like your traditional American buttercream frosting. You don't use any powdered sugar in this. So it's not as sweet, which could be a good thing. I know a lot of people don't like really super sweet frosting. Um, so this was nice, light and fluffy, and it piped really, really well, which I liked and enjoyed. And so yeah, you start, basically it's egg whites uh, that you're using. And you stir them up and you basically start making your meringue base. So let me tell you, this frosting is not like as easy as an American buttercream frosting where you kind of just do everything quickly. This one it requires you to do two things at the same time. So while I was mixing up those egg whites, I was also doing this on the stove top. There you see the, I'm getting the stiff peaks there. And then once you're, uh, I got a candy thermometer, how fancy. Um, and got this to, I believe it was 235 or 240 degrees. Um, which is uh, what you need it to be in order to start adding it to your whipped um, egg whites. And so you stir it in really, really slowly. It's the whole process. The video that I will link below from, I believe his name is The Preppy Kitchen. He explains it so well and I just basically followed his instructions to the tea. It is doable. It sounds a little intimidating, but as long as you have your KitchenAid mixer and all the ingredients, you're good. I flavored the frosting with vanilla. You can use all sorts of different extracts. And then comes the fun part, which is adding your color to the frosting. So I divided this up. 
I wanted to create like an ocean color because I am creating a wave effect here on this cookie cake you'll see here in a minute but I just added regular blue frosting and then I did add some yellow to give it more of a teal color and then I decided to try something new here I got some of this uh, saran wrap I put it on my counters and then I alternated between the blue and the white frosting because I wanted to make it like kind of like a swirly effect um, to make it look more you know natural and more like the ocean so um, this was the first time of me trying this you put your frosting on here um, and then after that you roll it up and then you put this into a piping bag I used I believe it was a 16 inch piping bag um, in order to get all of this frosting in there So for the cupcakes, I used a 1M size piping uh, uh, decorating tip and here I put it inside of a 16 inch piping bag, used a vase because that just gave me, you know, a taller so it's easier. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and put that in there and started to frost my cupcakes. I was able to frost 24 cupcakes and the cookie cake with this recipe. I probably would have liked a little bit more because towards the end there I was getting scared that I was running out. So it's always a good thing to make more because it would really stink to not have enough. So um, I love the way that the different, you know, the blue and the white kind of go together. It looks so nice. And then after that I added some white. Uh, sprinkles on top it was like the pearly kind and I got those at Walmart and I thought that would look super cute and of course the star of the show here are the gummy sharks I got these at Target they're so cute and they match perfectly and I put one on top of each cupcake all the kids love these they wanted to eat the cupcakes specifically for the gummy sharks so they were totally a hit with the kids Here's what they look like once they were all decorated. Aren't they so cute? I just thought they were adorable. Now it was time to frost the cookie cake. I used a number 32 star piping tip for this to create the more ocean effect here. And I wanted to show you up close real slow here how I did the borders, the edges of the cake. I did, after baking the cake, I did trim the edges so that they would be nice and straight you know because when it bakes it doesn't you know have the perfect shape so i went ahead and you know cut the edges made them nice and straight and that way um you know you get a nice rectangle shape so after i did the edges i also made waves on the bottom half of the cake and on the top portion i got two hand puppets that were from Party City. They're shark can puppets and I thought they were perfect to use as a prop. Unfortunately, I didn't get the footage of the bottom half of the cake, but you'll see it towards the end of the video. Um, I put waves on the bottom and then I traced out where the hand puppets would go and I put frosting around the tracings um, because I didn't want to put the hand puppets on until after we arrived at the party. It would just make it easier to transport and fit into the box. And I also used some Swedish fish for the bottom where the weights were. Next 
I wanted to show you this delicious pasta salad. I got this recipe from my friend years ago and I love making this for parties. It is just always loved by everybody. I doubled this recipe so I used two pounds of pasta. This is the medium shells. You can use penne pasta or ziti or whatever you like, bow ties. And then you get some chopped bell peppers in whatever colors you like. I added red, orange, and yellow. And then I also got a bag of grated Parmesan cheese, or shredded, I'm sorry, Parmesan cheese. I added one whole bag, it's a six ounce bag. And then some uncured hard salami. I used one package for this entire two pounds. And then some fresh parsley and some Olive Garden Italian seasoning. So you mix all these ingredients together, you put the dressing on at the end, and then you wanna refrigerate this overnight for at least eight hours. When you're ready to serve it, you wanna add a little bit more dressing, just give it a splash because the dressing does get absorbed by the pasta overnight. Um, and that's it guys, it's super simple, it looks amazing, and it tastes delicious. It is so, so good. Next was this super fun idea, it's a watermelon shark. So. You use a watermelon to create a like fruit centerpiece. And this was so much fun to do. I followed a tutorial on YouTube that I will also link in the description box. You see me there watching it as I go along. And this created just a beautiful little centerpiece where you could display the watermelon or any other fruit that you have. Um, you wanna cut out your template here for the teeth and it is simple to do it seems intimidating but you can do it guys if i can do it you can do it too so this was definitely you know a nice little centerpiece here and got the kids all excited about eating fruits so after i cut out the mouth i went ahead and started using my knife to cut out chunks of the watermelon and I also had a scoop um, that helped a lot in getting all of the watermelon out so that you basically just have the skin of the watermelon left over. This does get quite messy. My counters were full of watermelon juice but it was totally worth it. And then with a paring knife, um, you want to get a nice sharp paring knife for this um, to cut out the teeth. You do want to be really careful when you're cutting out the green part of the skin because you can cut a little too deep and it'll kind of mess it up. So just take your time doing this um, and follow the tutorial and it'll turn out perfect. It's super fun. You could use this for like a you know baby shark party or a shower, baby shower or anything like that. It's super fun and all the kids really enjoyed it. After I cut out the teeth, I went ahead and poked little holes on the sides for the eyes. So I just used the tip of my knife to do that. And then I used toothpicks to attach the eyeballs, which were grapes, <laughs> on the shark. And that worked out really well. And with that first piece I cut off in the beginning, I used that to make the fin and I also attached it with toothpicks. Okay, so next we're moving on to the piñata and the party favors. I got this piñata at Walmart. It was $27.88. This is some of the stuff that I used to fill it with. Lots of candy, some scented pens, some of these uh, little fidget toys, the stretchy fidget toys. Um, so yeah, we had about 17 kids, so I wanted to make sure we had enough candy to keep them all happy. And listen, I know that you could put in other things that are not candy in there, but you know, I want to be a fun mom, right? Sure, I'm all up. <laughs> Birthday parties don't come around all the time. So I feel like this is an appropriate time for the kids to have 
all the sugar and you know the parents can either do whatever they want with it afterwards but but yeah anyway i'm gonna move on to the party favors i purchased some of this stuff on timu i got um party favor bags originally i wanted to use these as pinata bags but they were bigger than i had anticipated so what i ended up doing is i got a bowl full of different uh, party favors and I had all of these bags here that the kiddos can take home. I love doing bags like this because it's something that the kids can use afterwards and it's not like a party favor that's just garbage basically. Um, so these bags are great because you know it's summertime they can put their little beach toys in there or you know add some a towel in there or whatever you know they want to take with them to the beach or the pool and here are some of the party favors that i put in a bowl so basically as the kids were leaving they got to choose um, a few party favors and put them in their bag and got to take that home and that kind of worked out really well and i got different things depending on the age um i got small little buckets like sand buckets from five below for the little ones um, that came to our party that weren't able to do the piñata. Um, so that was a great alternative for them. All right, my friends, here is the shark party reveal with all the decor. I got all the decorations of like this backdrop on Timu. This was a great, you know, way to be able to take pictures. Unfortunately, it rained, so we couldn't. But uh, we did burgers and hot dogs and we got some sand buckets to put all of our chips in and all of the paper plates and napkins were from Dollar Tree. Here was the salad which was such a hit and here is that watermelon shark with all the fruit around it. The kids loved this and it was just so much fun. And here is how the shark cookie cake turned out. It was so amazing, it was so much fun and the kids all loved eating it. Uh, we got some candles and kind of dressed it all up when it was time to sing happy birthday, but Caleb loved it. It was an awesome day. We got good weather most of the day. We did get rained out at the very end, but it was still so much fun. If you don't live near the beach, having a party like this at the pool or even a lake would still be so much fun and just a great way to make summer memories. And this is what it's all about guys. It was piñata time. I wanted to share this with you because it was just so much fun to see all the kiddos just having a blast with their little friends and Caleb was just the happiest little boy. Caleb was definitely a happy boy that day. Here are some pics of some of the decor that I got. This was also from Timu and some tablecloths and fishnets from Dollar Tree along with that shark themed Connect Four and just all the different things. I will have everything linked below for you guys. But yeah, I just wanted to share this little part here with my family. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. I hope that you're having a wonderful summer and I will be seeing you in the next video. I will be posting our vacation that we had just a little while ago here in Northern Georgia. Um, but yeah, this is what life is about. Just having family and friends around and celebrating wonderful moments.
I can't believe Caleb is going into kindergarten this fall and I just remember it like it was the other day where I shared his birth here on YouTube and here he is having his fifth birthday. So if you've been here that long, thank you so much and thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.